I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here this evening. This is my very first Latke Hamantash debate. I am, you might say, the virgin on this stage. You don't want to know what that makes Ted. <laughs> Like all members of the university community, and indeed of university communities worldwide, I have, of course, debated the relative merits of the Latke and the Hamantash in my own mind for many years. <laughs> but this is the first opportunity I've had to go public. I had originally thought that I would take the side of the Hamantash, but I'm thinking about it and realizing that I'm Talamudus ignoramus, <laughs> I thought I had better take a neutral position. Before beginning my dissertation on the Latke and the Hamantash, it's my pleasure to announce this evening that I've finally completed my seminal work, Mixed Fractions in Einstein's Theory of Relativity. And I feel that it's appropriate, given the august nature of this evening, that I give a brief exposition of this work when I finish my discussion of the Latke and the Hamantash. I take it, Ted, that that could be fit into our schedule? Certainly. It shouldn't be more than two or three hours. <laughs> Physicists, and I think Ted will back me up on this, have been woefully underrepresented over the years in these debates. This is a shame, for both the Latke and the Hamantash have had a profound influence on the development of physics. This influence began already with the beginnings of modern physics some 100 years ago, and it extends already to this day. Yet, and this is totally inexplicable to me, this influence has never received the recognition it deserves, either within the physics community or without. Let me just give you one shocking example of this. I have here in my hand Principles of Physics by Frank Blatt. This is a textbook that we use in our introductory physics course. Let's just take a look for Latke in the index. <laughs> Let's see. Kvetch, laser, lepton, locks. There's not a single entry for, for, for Latke in this book. So what I hope to do this evening is to rectify, in some small way, this omission. So let me begin then with the role of the Latke in the history of physics. I was in the basement of Regenstein the other day, and I ran across a very important paper of Einstein that has apparently been overlooked completely. It, 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 since it was in a journal which is not widely circulated, I of course wanted to copy it. So I took it to the Xerox machine, and I had only copied its front piece when the machine broke down. Worse yet, the machine swallowed my U of C ID card, <laughs> with the result that I wasn't able to get out of the library. It took four days in order to get this resolved, and numerous calls to the provost. When I finally got out of the library and returned to the stacks, I learned that that section of the stacks had been discarded. I think there's a trench out back. They bulldoze the books into the trench. And with it, this paper of Einstein. The reason, I was told, was to make room for more space in which students could read their emails. <laughs> I expressed concern about this situation to the head librarian, and I was told, and I quote, stack schmacks, it's all on the web anyway. <laughs> so to make a long story short, all that remains now of this paper, anywhere in the world, is this single copy that I possess of its friends piece. So I urge you to take careful notes. Years after this 
newspaper appeared. It was written, you'll notice, in 1911, <laughs> which was, which was uh, between the discovery of the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. I note also that the paper was written some 93 years ago today, so this is the anniversary of the paper. <laughs> in this paper, Einstein, in essence, disclaims the importance of the speed of light, which he calls a passing fancy, <laughs> in favor of the speed of Latke. The argument goes as follows. <laughs> traveling in a straight line at the speed of Latke. And it passes a railway platform, which is at rest. Observers in the train um, are eating Latkes, while those on the platform are eating some other um, um, uh, food products. Well, let me not go into the details of the paper, but the final result is that no food product under any physical mechanism can ever exceed the speed of Latke. <laughs> the paper also shows that the famous formula E equals mc squared, this is in an appendix which alas is now lost, in fact continues to hold, but only if C is taken as, of course, the speed of Latke.